In this video, I'm going to review real-world Excel VBA code submitted by my customers. If you want to see how you can improve your own code, then this video will be a goldmine of information. Thanks to everyone who submitted a project for review. I couldn't get to them all, but if there is enough interest, then I can do more videos like this. Let me know in the comments what you think about this format. OK, so let's jump right in. The first application we are going to look at is quite straightforward. It simply reads data from a spreadsheet and writes it to a database. And we're going to look and see how we can improve this code. Now, the first thing that we notice is that option explicit is not used at the top of the module. Having option explicit at the top forces us to declare our variables. And this is a good practice as it helps protect us from potential errors that may not be easy to detect. Now, when option explicit is at the top for module and I compile the code, you can see that it'll find a variable that hasn't been declared. Now, if you want to use option explicit in all your modules, then you simply go to tools and options and place a check beside require variable declaration. Now, when we create a new module, you will see that option explicit is automatically added to the top. Now, the next problem that I see is that all the variables are declared at the top of the sub. This is a messy way to write code. It's much better to declare variables as we use them. And this makes our code more readable and much easier to update. For example, let's take the variable CO, which is for the cost worksheet. Let's take this declaration and search for where the variable is used in the current procedure. You can see here, this is where it's used for the first time. If I was writing this code, I would declare and assign it in the one place just before we use it. And now you can see that it's all done here. If in the future we decide we don't need this, we can just easily delete it from here. This also makes it easier as it puts our code into sections, which makes it easier to read and update. Another issue that I see with this code is that it's not indented. And this means that all the code is left aligned, which makes it more difficult to read. So what we want to do is indent the code. So this means moving it in one tab. We highlight the code like this, and then we press the tab key and all the code moves in one tab. Now we typically indent code between the start and end of a module, between an if statement and an end if statement, between a for and next statement, and so on. So basically anywhere there is a section of code, and this will make it very easy to read this code. Now if we take a look at this code here, you can see that it is writing data to individual variables. Now I know why it's done this way, is because the variables are then being written to individual fields in a record set. So I would simply write all these cells to an array, and if we want to read them individually after, we could use enums to identify each piece of data. However, there is a much easier way to write data from a spreadsheet to a database. If we reference the ADO library, and we can use the insert into SQL statement and do a SQL select statement at the end of it, and this will read all the data from the worksheet. And you can see the code I've written here is much simpler and doesn't require reading lots of individual pieces of data and doesn't require lots of variables. Before we move on to the next piece of code, I just want to say that you shouldn't be too upset if you have lots of issues in your code. Everyone writes bad code in the beginning and the fact you are watching this video shows you want to improve and if you follow the advice here and on this channel, you will get there and your code will get much better. This is our next piece of code to review. I want to talk about what I like about this code first of all. So this function, for example, is written in a way that's very concise. And when we create subs or functions, they should perform one task and ideally they should be less than 20 lines. So you can see that he's achieved this here. Now, if I was going to make some changes, then the first thing I would look at is the sub and variable naming. So for example, the variable RSTD, which is short for range string to decimal. So we have to think of our code like we're reading words in a book, or reading words in a newspaper or whatever way we look at it. If the variable is called range string to decimal, then it makes it very easy to read. And we don't have to stop to figure out what the variable means. We can see it straight away. So you can see with WS data source, which refers to the worksheet, this is pretty well named. Now I would change the WS to sheet data source and avoid having any abbreviations. So getting into the functionality of the code, let's see what it does and if we can improve it. 
You can see here that we have a list of items and we want to perform a lookup on the text that we provide. So for example, if we provide the text sunny, we'll get back the value one. And if the text doesn't exist, then we add the new item to the list and give it the next number in the sequence. And then we return that number. Looking at the code again, I would remove find. I typically only like to use find when I've no other choice. And in this case, because we're specifying where our data is, we can use the column. So we can say column F. Sometimes when we get worksheets from other people, we can't decide where the different pieces of data are going to be. And in that case, we may have to use find. Now this code uses a loop to find the value each time. And this is quite inefficient. So I've written an alternative here where I use XLOOKUP. And you can see it requires less code and the code is more efficient. So rather than having to loop through all the items each time, we just use the XLOOKUP to find it within the range. If you look up here, you can see that I've created a bunch of tests to test out our convert string to decimal function. And I'm simply passing it all the different values that it may get when it's running normally. And this is a nice, easy way to test if it works correctly. So if everything returns true, then it worked correctly. But if something returns false, then we know that something has gone wrong. So this means at a glance, we can see if our new sub is working. And it's really effective way of testing our sub before we use it in our application, as otherwise we would need to run our application multiple times and we would need to change the data to test it as well. Now, if I was going to write a really professional version of this, then I would use a dictionary as this is a very fast way to look up. If you want to learn more about using dictionaries, then check out my dictionary playlist. This next application is a really nice one and it's based on what's known as a poker run. A poker run is a recreational event, often organised by motorcycle or car enthusiasts, where participants travel to multiple checkpoints collecting playing cards at each stop. And the goal is to build the best poker hand possible by the end of the run. The purpose of this application is to accept the hands that are submitted by the participants and then rank them from best to worst. For example, let's add a hand of four eights. We do this by clicking on each of the cards and you can see that they appear in the hand. When we've completed our hand, we click on submit and the application asks us for the name of the participant and then it will update the list of hands with the new one. So now we know what the application is doing. Let's take a look at the code and see how we can improve it. When we look at the code, you can see that we've got a bunch of global variables. So global variables are variables that are declared at the top of a module and that can be used by any sub or function in that module if they are declared as dim or private. If they are declared as public, then they can be used in any module in our application. So it's much better practice to declare variables in the subs where they are being used. Doing this has many advantages. When variables are global, it makes everything more difficult, such as changing the code, adding new code and finding errors and so on. Now, looking at these variables again, here's an interesting observation. I noticed that he only uses the variable type on the last variable in the dim statement. Unlike other languages, in VBA, you need to actually specify the type for each variable or it'll automatically be a variant. And this is something we want to avoid. So the correct way to do this would be like this. We specify the type for each variable on the dim line. And we should do this for all these variables to avoid them being variants. Now let's focus on the submit click function. Currently it evaluates the poker hands directly, which isn't inherently wrong. However, for cleaner code, I would move all the poker hand related logic to a separate module. The user form event subs should only contain code relating to the user form controls. So James who submitted this application said there was a problem with speed when a certain number of hands are entered. And this is most likely due to excessive processing on the worksheet. So multiple reading and writing to the worksheet, coupled with numerous sorts, can incur a significant speed penalty. To optimize the code, I will consider using arrays to hold the data and processing it in memory, and then finally updating the worksheet. This optimization can drastically improve your application speed, and it would actually make the code a lot cleaner as well. So lastly, a quick note on this code. Now this may not look like standard VBA code, so let me explain. 
The colons are used in VBA to join lines together, so it doesn't change how they work. Now the reason he has done it here is to make all the button clicks neater, because if we put them on separate lines, then the code would have taken up a lot of space, so it makes sense what he's done. Now there is an actual better solution where we can map all the button clicks to one event, but this is a little advanced. How we would do it is we would create a class module with a click event and declare a button for this using the with events keyword. We then assign all the buttons to an array of this class. As I said, it's a bit advanced, but it means we only need one event. Now I may do a video on this in the future as it's something that could be useful to a lot of people. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this video format and if you have any suggestions that you would like to see in future videos. Check out this playlist on the screen where you can find more ways to improve your VBA code.